Who is this person? Uh, this is the head of Mitras from the Temple of uh, Mitras in London. Uh, Mitras was a Greek Roman deity with temples across the Roman Empire, going from Adrian Wall, North England, to London and the rest of the Roman Empire, Italy, France, down to Northern Africa, including uh, the entirety of Roman Empire. It's a very popular religion, uh, mainly a male mystery religion, popular with, between the Roman legions, uh, soldiers and the merchants, so male only mystery. And it was uh, followed by people from um, in Roman for 100 BC to 400 AD. What's the story behind Mitras? Mitras, uh, the Roman form of Mitraism, is very much about a saviour god. Mitras who slays the bull and becomes the create not the creator god necessarily, but the saviour lord who starts off the creation process by slaying the bull. The bull itself is really a constellation Taurus if you're looking at a star map, which we have down here. So this is from the London uh, Temple of Mitras. And what we have here is the central iconography of uh, Mysteries of Mitras, the Torochtony, uh, the bull sling scene. And what we see here is Mitras um, stabbing the bull in the neck while looking away from the bull. We have a number of iconography around it. We have two characters who are holding the torch, a torch up and a torch down, representing spring equinox and autumn equinox, so the sun coming to its strength and the sun going down at the autumn equinox, losing its strength. We have a number of animal characters around the bull. We have the duck here, which represents Canius Major the constellation. You have Scorpio, const Scorpio constellation, and you have a raven, probably is sometimes shown on um, the cloak of Mitras. And in some of the other iconography, you have extra characters like the Leo, constellation Leo, around the map itself. Mitras himself is actually the constellation Perseus, the slain constellation Taurus. So what we have here is a star map of a of, uh, process that's happening in a stellar terms of, of a particular creation we've met. What you also see across and around the um, sling of Mitras, again emphasizing the stellar aspect of the religion, is the 12th sign of the zodiac. So as you can see, all the signs of the zodiac around Mitras, emphasizing the Mitras as a mover of the co cosmos and, a, and the lord of the season and, and the stars, really. So if you have this deity who is very much bound up with the, the cosmos, who slays the bull, who provides eternal life, oh, what made it attractive to people? Well, it's really, a, it's following the Plato's ideas and Neoplatonism about us of being, being born onto the earth. You descend from the heavens, from the stars, and every soul is, has a star of its own, and we come to the world to experience life and return to it. So at birth, we descend into the earth, following the Milky Way, and during the, what time we are in the earth, we experience and then and he played it and says we return to the stars and that's and if you've done the good deeds you return to your star of your soul so Mitraism is really follows that this is the platonic religion it allows the accession back to the star your star inside one star inside um, so the seven grades in Mitraism um, are actually planetary so seven heavens you ascend through as you walk through the various initiatory experiences which allows you to uh, die before you die you return to the source before you yeah, physically die. So it's about saving, uh, about salvation. It's about returning to your, to, returning to heaven, literally. So there are different stages of progress within the religion? Yes, there are seven grades, uh, each to do with uh, uh, heaven or a, a planetary sphere. Uh, you started with uh, Korax, the great raven, which to do with Mercury. The second grade was to do with uh, planet Venus and Nymphus uh, called male bride or the bee the crystal. Chris's, um, again symbolizing bees and honey and, it's, and honey and the relation to the moon and um, the keeper of the honey bringing sweetness into life. So there's a number of interesting um, mysteries to do with the honey as well, which we could discuss later. Um, the third grade was called uh, Mele, which is a soldier to do with Mars, so that's a warrior, warrior grade, miles with uh, um, symbols of spear, a helmet, for example, as well. Then you have the next grade being Jupiter, with Jupiter called Leo the Lion, and the next grade after that was called Perseus the Persian, which was another connection to the Persian origin of the religions, and that was the Moon grade. 
and six gray balls called Hedios Romus, the Sun Runner, which symbolizes the Sun, and the seven gray balls for Saturn, uh, Parter, or the Father. So you have these seven grades of initiation that uh, the followers would have gone through, uh, finally reaching the, uh, the part of the Saturn, beyond Saturn, and then beyond the uh, heavenly environment into there. So, so what would have made it attractive to people? Why would have that people come to this religion? What, what, what was it that, that made them feel it was worthy of their investment? Well, there is a salvation thing, which is like lots of religion, like Christianity, have a salvation aspect, which is uh, very attractive to people. Uh, but also being, a, being popular in a Roman call, in a Roman religion, being a warrior, you would also have the aspect of brotherhood. Uh, you know, if you are in a, in a shield wall with your fellow initiate, you'd probably be going to be <laughs> supporting a lot more than it would be otherwise. Uh, so there's the element of uh, uh, fraternity and uh, equality within, within the brotherhood as well. And also, uh, as you can see, Mitras wears the Figurian cap or the Liberty cap, and that in itself is quite important as well because Mitras is a liberator as, as well. And within the Roman cult of Mitras, you see one of the few scenarios in the Roman Empire uh, during the Roman period where you had people of different grades of social classes could actually sit in the same place and interact with each other. So you will have senators or soldiers or freed slaves or slaves who outside wouldn't, you know, socially would be completely unacceptable to talk to each other, would be feasting together side by side in the Mitras because they were brothers in Mitras and they had same experiences and they were doing the same initiative you know, right so that it's very much a socialist <laughs> yeah. religion in that sense and it actually offered equality uh, fraternity to and brotherhood to the initiate so that was again quite attractive so what did they do in those temples well the temple structure itself um, would have been designed to help this the uh, grades of initiation we're discussing um, ascending to the planet so the the temple re really is, is really a microcosm um, so physically would have looked like a cave or a, some sort of subterranean temp building um, representing the, the universe being external to it. So you, what you're experiencing through in the Metrium is meant to represent your journey externally in, in the outer, you know, in the cosmos. So it's very much a symbolic journey and the temple allows that symbolic journey to be made. So you would have the incense burning, you would have the very, um, what I would call special effects in the temple itself. It's some of the, um, for example, when we're looking at the Mitras slaying the bull here, mm. uh, in this particular one, this is a one sided, just this is all you can see. But there are other examples from other parts of Europe where there was this the actual iconography was two sided and it, will, it would have been pivoted. So at some point during the mysteries or the ceremonies, the actual central piece could have been rotated mm. and a different mystery would have been shown. And to, to experience that in the middle of the ceremony would be quite interesting, I imagine. Uh, because you are suddenly shown a different station of the cross, for example, if you want to use a mm. uh, so analog there. Um, so, yeah, so there were lots of special effects in the temples to, yeah. to emphasize and increase the experience of the people. For example, um, there are examples of the actual head of uh, the sun having uh, the rays cut through the metal plate, and you would have candles behind it, so literally you would have had the rays of the sun coming from behind the sun. Uh, and then you would have had the things like the incense and, mm. and the, the usual so you, things you so you've get got, in the temple. So you've, got, so you've got these fantastic visual images, you've got the burning of incense, but how did people have to live in order to be part of this religion? What did they have to, to well, do? Well, it's a good uh, it's saying, isn't it? My ward is my bond, and I think that's a really good thing that comes out uh, or links to Mitraism, because Mitra was a lord of contract as well. And, you know, telling the truth, sticking to what you have to say, you know, being straightforward to people, those were some of the qualities and the basic qualities that the followers would have had to follow. Um, but also the liberty and brotherhood I was mentioning. So again, um, the people who were in a daily life, what well, well would hope were striving to those ideas and also the idea of perfection, improving yourself because you have to ascend through the planetary sphere. So when you are a, a Korax, a raven, I work working with Mercury, that is the communication grade. So, I mean, we don't know how exactly what they did because it hasn't been written down, but looking at iconography and what Mercury suggests um, and the Cadesius, then you, you have certain ideas of what the grade might have meant to the followers. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe the follow the, at the Mercury stage, people would have been working with poetry or bardic mm. stage and, you know, maybe improving those kind of creativity or if with the melee and Mars, they would have been improving their fighting skills, perhaps. I mean, yeah. you know, this is purely speculative, of course, but those are some of the things we could um, speculate based on the iconography. 
So I get this. Sure. Sorry. Shall I actually maybe might be good for the answer to that question, maybe we should just read the inscription from the Santa Prisca Temple because it actually tells you what they did to some extent. So mm -hmm. I might well, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, and we'll keep it really we'll, really we'll keep it really simple because yeah. we can yeah. probably pad it yeah. out. Okay. Um, um, okay. All set? Yeah. So two thousand years ago, if I wanted to join this religion, what would I have to do? We had to go to the initiative grades. You had to uh, the first grade was of that uh, core access mentioned, uh, which was to do with Mercury. So you had to go through a, uh, a ceremony that would have introduced you to that uh, a sphere or atmosphere of uh, working with Mercury. So that was the first grade. That's so there's an initiation grade. ceremony and you're on the first level. But what then if I want to go up to another level? What, what happens yeah, next? There would be studies that would have been completed as part of the first grade. Uh, things had to be learned and there might have been ordeals or tests which you had to go through and then after you will enter the next next grade and you work your way right up to the seventh, seventh grade. grade if you choose i guess you know it's not a wasn't compulsory to ascend to all the seven grades you know and it was it, each temple itself were quite you know small physically so we talk about 20 30 people in it so um it, it was you had to strive you know and i get this sense that it was about personal development rather than having to appease a deity. Is, is that right? Yes, I mean, you, you're trying to ascend yourself, so you're trying to work your way through the grades and, and you know, place ideas of returning to, the, to the, uh, your soul in the stars. That would be what you were trying to do, uh, if just following a new planetary philosophy. Yeah. Was there a priest or a leader who... Yeah, that's the, the father, the father uh, would have been the highest grade in the temple who would have been responsible for running the mitrium and you know, always, always, always seeing the initiations and ceremonies. And uh, there are references to a father of the fathers who was based in Rome itself. So there might have a been... father of the fathers? So, so there might have been a pope figure <laughs> on top of it as well. Yeah. So what did they wear? Partier, partier, so what did the father wear? How would he have looked if um, we were to yeah, see we, him physically? Well, there are a number of this, uh, iconography of various characters of various grades between, between the um, the structure. The father, um, the red cap and the red cloak would have been potentially the grab. Would have been a, a red cap and coat? Red cape. cloak and a cape, yeah, and potentially a ring as well. So the actual Bulgarian cap, of course, is red as well. In all iconography you see of Mitras, he's wearing a red cap and occasionally we see him in a red cloak as well. So not too far uh, from some of the modern things you see in other religions. The Pope? Yeah, the Pope, yeah. You mentioned that they had initiation rites within the temple but also you mentioned feasting yes so part of uh, part of ceremonies or after the ceremony potentially there was a ritual feast uh, communion which was taking place and we actually have an image of it here um, communion yeah so we have uh, uh, we have the actual we have bread in front of it we have in, in this image you can't see the grapes very much but there are other images showing grapes and wine so we have the cops are holding it so it was a feast of wine and bread and you have Mitras and the sun sitting next together in, in the central, central place. You have the bull here, which has been slayed, which is providing the feast. And you have the various uh, characters around, which are the various grades and initiates. You have the raven, which actually is wearing the head of a raven, head of a uh, corax. Uh, you have the Perseus, the Persian. And you have a figure here of a lion, the Leo. So potentially the, in the temple could have people would have been dressed in the various uh, robes and uh, masks which to do with, with, uh, within the relevant grade structure. So how would the communion have worked? Was, was it a feast or was well, there a the ritual? Was, it was referred to as a feast, yeah. I mean, it's um, drinking, eating and celebrating uh, what would have been afterward, the ascension of Mitras to the heavens. So we have an image of a feast followed by Mitras getting into the chariot of the sun and returning to the stars. So very much like the Last Supper and ascension of Christ back to the heavens. So there's that parallel there as well. That's kind of thrown me that, because that's <laughs> going into Christianity. Uh, okay, um, why do you think this religion didn't last? What, was, what were its weaknesses? Well, it's, uh, West was a male only mystery in the, Roman, in the Roman form of the religion. The Persian story is a different uh, story, really. And uh, the Roman form is a male mystery and between the other religions, between the Roman Empire, they all declined and, you know, were competed out by Christianity, really. So it was one of the, one of the earlier Christ religions to be um, 
seen as a competitor to Christianity because of various parallels it had. So yes, like other religions of the time, uh, they all uh, kind of lost out really to Christianity. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was uh, being being a male mystery was always going to be appealed to only half the population. So has there been a revival? Of late, there are. This. Yeah, there are sure there are people who are, you know, have in the last hundred years have been interested in Mitraism and then have tried to restart it and revive it. And and also there are a number of interested parties, not Mitraist themselves, but other people who have an interest. You know, people from some people from uh, Christian background who are interested because of its iconography. Uh, uh, people from Freemasonry background are interested as well because again you have the Brotherhood with its various great structures. Um, and you have a number of artists and poets and writers and musicians. Who, so there's a whole group of people out there who are interested in it uh, as interested parties. And of course, Zoroastrianism itself has Persian Mitra as one of his Yazatas or Archangels or protective spirits, really. So we do have the Persian element, which is still alive today with, with, you know, with the element of um, Mehr or Mitra in it. Although Mithras thrived in the Greco-Roman world, did it pull in elements from other parts of the known world at that well, point? Well, yes, I mean, the, the name Mitras is really Mitra, but it's Romanized name, name of the Persian Mitra, who was um, one of the, in the pre Zoroastrian period, would have been one of the deities of the Indian European deities. So you will have Mitra Varuna in, in, in India and then Mitra in Zoroastrian. So, well, in Zoroastrian, it really uh, becomes a protective spirit, not a deity. Uh, Ahur Mazda is on top of. Uh, the pantheon, not the mm. pantheon, is not really the right word for it, but the top of the spirituality is the Haramazda, and then you have the various angels and archangels who are underneath the Haramazda, and Mitra is one of them, and Ahita, Tia, and a number of others. Um, and so the Roman Mitras really is, is a combination of, um, you know, 30% Greek, 30% Roman, 30% Persian, and 10% Egypt. <laughs> you know, so Egypt is so a, a, a real syncretic, mixture. Yeah, syncretic religion, really, Roman cult of Mitras, and it brought elements from a number of places. You know, of course, the, the actual the clothes Mitras wears, you can't really see it in this image. Um, if you go back to the, the bull slaying, the Tarkhtuni, uh, you can see his, uh, um, his uh, the Figarian cap again, which is the from Figaria, which is Turkey now, really, modern Turkey. And also, you get uh, images of Mitras wearing the Persian baggy trousers, uh, which is, you know, again, it, Usually the Greek mm. commentators are, you know, either or, mm. either wearing togas or, or naked or something. But in, in case of Mitras, you're actually wearing Persian baggy trousers, which, again, points to origins of original Mitras um, and the Pygarian cap. And also, um, and Mitras, Mitras himself, there is, there is actually, it's a celibate date. There's no stories really about Mitras um, having, in the Roman form, having a partner. So mm. you have that again, another celibate uh, saviour lord elements again. So if he's a saviour deity, would people expect this deity to save them through going through these seven levels? Was that central to this religion? Yeah, it, it, we do have um, you know, iconography surviving that says Mitra saved us by it's shedding the internal blood. Uh, refers to the slaying of the bull. So yes, Mitra has saved you know, mankind, so to speak, in that, in that, in that way. But it is more, more of the opportunity to, to save rather than you, you immediately become saved because you chose the part. So, you, so there is, you still have to work your way with, with, with the grades and, and the mysteries. So it's almost like many ancient religions. There's a saviour deity, there's initiation, uh, there's blood shedding as part of the central defining yeah. myth. Was there baptism? There were elements. Water was used in some sort of baptism. There were you. Um, it's again, it's difficult some of that because we don't have clear text saying what they did or that did not do. But we know from Christian writers that the, when they criticized Mitraism, they criticized some of the parallels that it had. Um, and baptism was mentioned as well as you know, as well as well as a commun the communion they had. Um, so there is, yeah, we knew we know some of the things were quite similar, but that that was really the elements that are common in a lot of ancient religions. Was there any sense of grace? Oh, no, hold on. Did Mitras do anything for the people who followed him, or was it simply a case of doing what you had to do in order to improve yourself and obtain the highest level within the religion? Did they expect him to, to act in their lives? Well, if you're a soldier and you, you know, you're fighting, you want you, know, you, want, you worship a God who is uh, you know, also a warrior God. You want, you know, you're hoping he will be standing next to you and helping you in battle. So, so yeah, you would be expecting him to be looking after your interest if you're a soldier in battle. And if you're a merchant, Mitra has a lot of contract. Again, 
it will be looking after your interests. So yes, you'll you definitely expect the deity to be, uh, you know, to be active, <laughs> not uh, just somewhere in the heavens uh, looking down. So there will be the element of uh, the deity will be affecting your day-to-day -day life. But you wouldn't have to make sacrifices to this deity. It was simply a case of working through the initiation. Well, you, make, you, say, you certainly make offerings. I mean, that's part of it. But we don't know enough. Uh, for example, the bull slaying scene is. It's a, it's a metaphor. There is, the mid-room itself is too small to actually bring in a bull. That mm. literally will be a bull yeah. in a china shop if you yeah. try to do that yeah. with all the marble statues. Yeah. <laughs> so that was something that was a metaphorical slaying of the bull. So there were no bull being slayed as far as we can tell. But there might have been other offerings and sacrifices done. You know, we, we don't know enough to be able to say 100%. But the feast, of course, would have been a ritual feast. So there might have been animals slayed for the specific you know, barbecue of whatever the feast was. And, and uh, a bread and everything else. So. What do you think was the real appeal behind this then for men? Was it the brotherhood? Was it yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, should we just, should we stay up? Okay, yeah. Why do you think men got into this religion? What was the appeal for them? Yes, I, the brotherhood, I think, it was a big appeal, um, especially for the, you know, with, with the temple, most of the temples that you find are actually near um, where the legions were based. So it's you know hand in hand with, with the soldiers really. So you have remains of a temple in, in Wales in Carnarvon again next to where the, the temple um, the temple is next to where the soldiers were based. Again Hadrian Wall along Hadrian Wall where all the centuries were based and the soldiers were based again. Um, so it really follows where the legions were, where the Mithras temples followed. Um, so I, I so that I think that tells you a lot really about how important it was to them and what role it played in their daily lives really.